Ephesus, que chronia se spola, a blessed day, celebrating Saint Nectarios, and again being joined in liturgy. I'm going to ask the altar boys to come out. All the altar boys to come out. And I want to see the young people. So if we have, if you are 18 years or younger, if you're 19, you don't have to come up. You can, but you don't have to. But if you are 18 years or younger, I would like to see you here. Altar boys. Nobody here that's 18, younger, younger than 18. Oh, wow. Here we come. If you would normally be in Sunday school, does that help? If you would be, come on over here. You think you're thinking, come on. Come on. That's better. I almost thought there were no children here at this parish, Father Michael. Doing any weddings? Okay, then we have some children. Are we all here? If you're shorter, I need you to come to the front. If you're shorter, come to the front. That's it. That way I can see you. Otherwise, I can't see you. Right? Good job. Good morning. How are you? Is that your sister? And what's her name? Iliana? for a team? What team? Okay. We're not. We're fine. Kalimara says, good morning. No leaning. Who can tell me what they heard in the gospel story today? What's your name? What did you hear, Mr. Nico? A girl that was sick, like you know, you you uh, you think you're moving, like you're talking, so it sounds like a bishop today, mixing everything up. You're putting two ideas together. There was a woman. What's the difference between a woman and a girl? One's age. Did you say aged or age? Age. Okay, you're right. There was a woman in the first story, and there was a girl in the second part of the story, right? So the woman in the first story, what did she do? Do you know what she was doing? Who can tell me? Barbie. <laughs> Who can tell me? What did the lady do? Where was Jesus? He was, you mean he saw a crowd and he went into it? Oh, so come closer a minute. I want everybody to come closer. And I want you to look out this way. And come a little closer to the bishop still. Come closer. And closer. Oh, you're stepping on me. Did you mean to step on me? Did you do that on purpose? You didn't, huh? But we're in a crowd. You're not close enough. Come on closer. They were in a crowd. When you're in a crowd, are you already hitting somebody else? Are you touching somebody, Dean? Okay. Are you intending to do that? No. It's... What would we call it? Intentional or accidental? Accidental. So we're in a crowd. Now I want us to all go as one group down the church, the main hall, the main uh, diadromo here. Let's keep going straight. Walk. One crowd. Come on. Stay close to each other. Watch the steps. Watch the steps. Go down. Stop in the front, don't go any further. Go, don't go further, go in, go in, in, in. Go in, go in, go ahead in. Don't go any further in the front. You're not listening in the front. 
The bishop said, don't go any further. Come back. Come back. I'm telling these people to go in. Now you move forward. You move back in there. From the back, you come to the front. From the front, you go to the back. That's enough. Now come back here with me. Stand up here. Stand up here. We were in a crowd. Come on up here. Everybody come up here and face the people so we can talk to the people a little bit. Here's my candle lady this morning. Good morning. Come on up. Okay. You can stay right here. You can be right here. Sometimes we're in a crowd. You can come with me. Okay. Sometimes we're in a crowd. And we, we're all together. I don't know what you consider it to be like today in the church. Could this be a crowd for you? Well, I think there could be more people, but we're going to call it a crowd. And because we're in a crowd, in some cases we have picked the place where we want to sit. Very intentional. Some of our ladies have a place that they will never move from. And if you try and move them, you'll be in trouble because it's like zoned property. That's their spot. Don't dare, don't dare to move them. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just telling you that we know you do it. The visitor who comes has to find a place to sit. And sometimes we're sitting next to people that we don't know. We're in a crowd. Now, Jesus was in a crowd. Do you know why everybody was following Jesus? What's your name? Max. Why was everybody following Jesus? Did they think he was a special man? You're right. They followed him because they, they thought that he was special. And what did they know he could do? What is your name? Alexandra, what could Jesus do? They knew he could heal anybody. And how was he going to heal them? How was Jesus going to heal them? Uh, you know the answer. It's not hard. How do you think he was going to heal them? Max, I'm going to let you stay right there for a minute. How was he going to heal them? Yeah. Jesus was touching people. Jesus was touching people. All of us, we touch people. We come into contact with different people at different times of the day and in our lives and at work. Get made a guess for us. We get onto the bus and we sit next to somebody. Sometimes we don't like it. We don't like the person who sat next to us. Or we look and we say, mm, I don't like their hair. I don't like their tattoos. I get up and I leave. We touch people all day long. And the kids are here. Now, when you're touching each other, are you intending to convey any meaning right now except that it's crowded? Barb? No. Right now they're in a position that they've been forced to be close to everybody, Nico. And it's crowded and we're touching people. People surrounded Jesus in today's gospel lesson. Just like people come to the church. But there's a difference in the gospel story today. And the difference is, what's your name? Patrick, are you tired today? Yeah. Okay, come with me. The difference in the gospel story today is that one woman who was in that crowd where everybody was touching, everybody was going, but what was the difference? One woman had a purpose. She had an intent. Everybody was touching. We're touching the families. We're touching. But one woman came, ke ihi afti ena skopo. Mia itan afti po irte kodatu, ke krifa malista. O ihi apo prosta. I gine ka afti po irte simer irte krifa. Na miton di, ya ti na miton di. Why didn't this woman want to be seen? That was in today's gospel reading. I'm pushing my way through. Why didn't she want to be seen? Why didn't she want to be seen, Nicholas? Why? Because she was scared. 
because she was scared, number one. What else? She was ill. She was sick. Και εμείς ξέρουμε μερικές φορές όταν είμαστε άρρωστοι, δεν θέλουμε να δούμε τον κόσμο ούτε τον κόσμο να μας δει. The woman was ill. She had a flow of blood. She had a constant, she was bleeding, and she couldn't stop. For how many years? Don't tell him. He knows. How many? Twelve years. Okay. For twelve years, she was bleeding, and she came from behind, and she came with purpose and intent. Κάνω την ερώτηση. Ερχόμαστε εδώ στην εκκλησία, αλλά ποιος είναι ο σκοπός μας; When we come to this church to come close to Jesus, what is our intent? Τι θέλουμε να κάνουμε; Είναι απλώς διότι πρέπει να κάνουμε αυτό την Κυριακή; Is it only because, why are you why are you here in church today? You're here to learn about God. Who made you come? Nobody. Nobody. How did you get up in time? You woke up by yourself. Are you going to be a priest? Maybe. We come to church sometimes with a strong purpose, sometimes not with a strong purpose. But this person who came in the gospel story today with a purpose that was in her heart because she was ill, and she had spent, if you heard the story, she spent, the Greek word is vion, she spent her entire livelihood, everything she had on doctors. Where are my doctors? And she wasn't healed. Everything she had and she wasn't healed. And she came up behind Jesus, and she touched his garment with purpose, with intent. And when she touched him, what happened? How do you know? Was it said in the gospel? Which gospel writer wrote today? Yes. You're right, Luke. How did you get that one? He listened, okay. Luke is, how many gospel writers do we have? Uh, okay, you got that part. Can you name another one? Another one? Another one? Yeah, you're an A student too. All right, and that's that's the point. Ερχόμαστε μερικές φορές στην εκκλησία χωρίς σκοπό. Ερχόμαστε διότι ή θα πιούμε το καφέ μετά ή θα πάμε μετά για φαγητό. We come to church and sometimes I I want to suggest that our intent is not strong and it could be stronger. Sometimes we come because well I've got to take Max to Sunday school, so I've got to be I've got to be here. And I the fellow but I get up because I've got to take Max to Sunday school. Sometimes we think, well, I'm supposed to meet my kumbaru at the church, so I better come and I thought the Sometimes we think I'm coming to church because I'm coming to touch Jesus. I'm coming specifically to receive communion. And the point of today's story is that many people are here. Many people surrounded Jesus. But only one woman was healed because she came with intent. Διότι αυτή η κυρία ήρθε με σκοπό. Δεν ήρθε απλώς μια γυναίκα στον όχλο μέσα. Όχι. Αυτή η γυναίκα ήρθε με σκοπό. And her purpose was to come and find that which nobody else could do. And so certain was she, and so afraid was she, that she from behind touched his garment. And what did Jesus say? Do you remember what Jesus said? Who touched me? Somebody touched me. You're in a crowd with all these people, and all of a sudden somebody touched you. It's the most odd question, but why is it real? Because only that one woman went with the purpose. Everybody else wanted. I'm an Orthodox Christian, I, and I don't go to church. I'm Orthodox Christian. I haven't seen you in church. Well, Father, you know. There has to be a purpose. If we're coming to church and we're coming to see our friends, ultimately the real issue is we're coming to touch Jesus. That's got to be the issue. And how we touch him and how he touches us is different. Some of you are sitting close to each other and you are, in a way, touching. 
that some of us touch with God's grace, some of us touch with God's love, some of us touch because we are hurting and we need somebody to touch us back. And Jesus is that one. Είναι ο ίδιος ο Χριστός που μπορεί να έρθει κοντά μας όταν πονάμε, όταν είμαστε άρρωστοι, όταν έχουμε κάποια ανάγκη την οποία δεν τη ξέρουμε. Ο Χριστός είναι αυτός που μπορεί να μας αγγίξει. Christ is the one who can touch us in all of those times. Not like the crowd. Max? Can you hold that for a minute? Not like the crowd. Jesus doesn't touch us like the crowd. Jesus touches us as our brother. He touches us as our father. He touches us as the healer. And that is why when we come for communion, what does he do? He touches us. That is why when the priest reads the prayers of forgiveness, what does he do? He takes his epidrachine and he puts it on you to touch you. Because there is a difference for a general idea, and there's a big difference when it is a specific prayer with intent for that person. We need Jesus to touch us, and we need to touch him. Not because we're all bunched up in a crowd, ladies, but because he is the only one who can bring true meaning and true purpose and true sanctity to our lives. Thank you, Mr. Max. When you are called for communion today, remember what we're doing. We're touching God. And he is touching us with purpose and meaning and intent. So we don't want to just be one in the crowd. We want to be that person who was so convinced that she could be healed that at the same time she was so embarrassed that she came from behind and touched his garment. May God grant us mercy and forgiveness. May he touch our hearts and heal us. May his presence be with us. And may we become not just people of the crowd, but truly his disciples. Amen. Max, you can go sit down. Altar boys in the back.